So I totally do plan on working on my dress. I feel dead right now, but um, I just wanted to like actually come on because I said that I would start my stream at 2 and I don't want people to think like I'm not coming on or whatever so <laughs> you're gonna have breakfast with me I guess um, I am going to just uh, finish up this really burnt bagel which I clearly have issues I cannot for the life of me not burn a bagel but So, yeah, I'm dead. I did not go to sleep until like 6 a.m. But it's fine. It's been like that for what seems like forever now. And I, it's not like, um, it's not like I don't get sleep though. I literally didn't wake up till like, one o'clock. So that's like a full night's sleep just in in the day. This coffee tastes so good. Oh interesting. I really don't know yet like how exactly Twitch works. Because I feel like I don't actually see everyone that's on the stream. That's on the stream. So that's interesting because it says I have zero viewers, but then I just messaged someone and they said they were watching me and they knew I was eating. So, but um, yeah. Um, on a more positive note, I feel like I am doing better, like not in the whole sleeping thing. Maybe it's just delayed because now it says I do Google, so I don't know. I think it, it definitely is delayed. I know it, it has a delay, but like that delayed? I don't know. Um, I am like consistently posting videos on YouTube still, which is... A shocker for me. I definitely never thought that I would actually be able to post day after day after day after day. Like it takes me so long to edit one video which my videos are always late but still the only reason I'm on my phone right now is I wanted to see like if I can check what day I'm on like how many days in a row I've been posting. Oh yeah obviously I can easily check. I don't know math at all so this is probably going to be really hard for me <laughs> but I can just look at the first video I posted obviously or not why isn't it showing me all of them what was the first video I ever posted hmm oldest okay this is I'm sorry this is probably such a boring live stream and it has nothing to do with um with what the title of this video is. Okay, it's saying I posted this video on March 24th and it is currently April 29th. So that's like a month and some days. So definitely I'm well over the 30 day mark, posting 30 days in a row. So that's awesome. Oh my gosh, like literally this is so freaking good. Why is this coffee tasting so good? It's like, you know how some mornings like 
you have so much coffee like in such a I don't know like small period of time that you start to feel like well whatever I have to drink this to like get the caffeine that's not so great but then you change one small element of your routine or like how you make it and it's just like the best thing you've ever tasted in your life I'm generally a black coffee drinker I prefer it um but then it's kind of like that like I've just been home my face looks very bad right now but I've just been home for an extended period of time as everyone has been and um, I feel like I've been drinking more coffee than usual because what else am I doing and um, yeah I've started to just be like Ugh, do I even want coffee do I even want tea and then I just got some almond coconut milk I had just a dash like my coffee is still completely dark you can't really see it because I don't want to pour it on the floor but still very dark I just put like a, the smallest dash of it in there and oh, life-changing this is amazing okay so let me talk you through this while I finish my cup of coffee I'm probably gonna actually wait to eat this because it's so crunchy and not great um also the amount of butter I put on this sorry that's probably loud it's ju it's just not okay I know I'm aware of that Okay, so as far as this dress goes, let's kind of like tilt the camera a little bit down. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I started this dress. I think I've been doing it now maybe on, this is my fourth live stream working on this dress. It's come a what, oh, quite a ways. I'm actually really happy with it. Um, we did have like a ruffle going across the front, but I don't want to worry about doing the ruffle until... I get the whole dress together and honestly I'm a really visual person and I really like to um, try it on and like see where this is gonna land like you know is your crotch actually showing or is it a mere miss because that makes a huge difference you know so um, yeah I really like it um, so far it's not my taste at all it's nothing that I would ever wear but um, you never know never say never and also it doesn't have to be for me I just want to you know do things that are different and creative and take advantage of materials that I have at hand so that's what we're doing um, so I started um, first we draped it all in the first live stream then we adjusted um, this side because we originally had a symmetrical garment but some of this fabric was kind of, um, um, some of, uh, what is it called? Um, some of this fabric is not the best because it is a full leather. And, um, I've talked about this before on my channel and actually let me turn up the volume on here. I actually turned it down. I have no idea how you guys can hear me. So let me know if it's getting too loud or if it was too quiet before. But um, I had it down before because I was literally chewing a crunchy bagel in your ear. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, this faux material, you have to be really careful when you're working with faux leather. I truly do believe in upcycling over buying um, new clothes. And I really, 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 really try my hardest not to um, fall prey to like over shopping and fast fashion and all of that. And if you look at my wardrobe, I honestly really think I have been doing an amazing job. I used to work in retail for many years, and I would literally go into work and leave work with a new item of clothing like 75 to 85% of the time. And there would be plenty of times like that if I wasn't leaving work with new items of clothing that like there would be one day a week that I would buy like 10 new items or something. And so my wardrobe blew up really quickly. Um, I worked in uh, retail for quite a long time, but it was specifically this one store I worked at that I feel like it was another level. The other store I worked at, um, I did wear all their clothes and I did really like believe in their brands and, um, Definitely by the time I left all of my clothes were, were their clothes, but I feel like I worked in the other store for a, sh a shorter period 
and my entire wardrobe is still this brand. Um, this shirt is not exactly that brand, but it's somewhat. So if you know what this shirt is, this is not the store, but it's similar. And this is actually bought for before then, but um, not important. Anyways, so uh, what is it called? Um, but yeah, so ever since then, I've kind of slowly weaned off. Like, at, actually, like, when I had that job, um, I had a coworker um, and friend that was obsessed with the, the idea of a capsule wardrobe. And she, like, had rules to, like, the stuff that she would buy. Not that she wouldn't buy that much, because she would buy a lot. She would buy, like, I feel like she would buy more than me. But she had rules, and she... Um, did that because she wanted to be able to grab anything from her co what? closet and it all to match no matter like what she would put like grab and put together all of it would match because it was all within the same color palette so we kind of flipped because since then she kind of has gone off the deep end and has like um a a really eclectic wardrobe at this point I would say like not too funky but like she has all different colors and she has like flowy clothes and then like um more structured clothes and they're not all within the same color palette so she kind of like went away from that because she was so strictly adhering to it so I try not to be so strict but at the same time I I am pretty strict when I worked there I did start only buying within a certain color palette and it was definitely um navy blue <laughs> was the like key color but it worked out for me so much because now I travel for a living and it's so easy to pack my suitcase because I can just grab anything because everything is either like shades of white and gray navy blue or black and then yes there's some funky pieces here and there because generally I am a pretty funky and weird with like what I like um and not in this way at all <laughs> this is way too edgy for me um but uh what is it called um it just makes it way easier to shop and just put things together because I this what I'm wearing right now is not typical for me I'm more the type of person that likes to wear layer upon layer upon layer but sadly I have not done my laundry in well I did do um laundry last week but I only did my undergarments and towels so I am very much running out of clothes but if I was not running out of clothes I would probably have a collared shirt underneath this because that's just how I am I like layers but anyway so this is very bare for me but then again of course it's cocktail dress so you can be a little bit different on cocktail um anyways so we're gonna get to this and we are going to start basting the um, dress together I so what I was saying though is that I did um we started draping it then we adjusted the drape we played with adding a hem to it this is all the fabric I have left. Maybe I have a little bit of scraps left, but this is a ruffle. So we can add this for a ruffle hem. The only thing is it only covers half of the hemline. So we got to decide how we want to make that work. Um, I am playing with the idea because I know that there's not really any structure under this. And I don't really want to put structure under it. I want to create French seams. So I want um, the garment to just be these two layers. I'm not going to line it, but it's going to be French seamed all the way through so that it holds together really beautifully. Um, it's long lasting other than the fact that this is upcycled pleather, which means it's just going to start peeling apart and be awful. But we're going to work with that. And, you know, maybe we're going to do something interesting with it, like glaze it or something. I don't know. I kind of want to like who cares like we're just doing this for fun so but because there's going to be no structure underneath I know that this front even though it looks so gorgeous on the mannequin it's not going to hold very well because there's nothing holding it up like let's use our brains here so I think I'm actually going to make it a little bit like dancer-ish and I'm gonna have a seam come from either right here or right here not a seam a strap and come to the back like maybe right here to here actually and that will just hold the front side up a little bit better 
um, without being too much because I really do like that it's one shoulder. So yeah, we're going to play with that idea. Last night I did a quick live stream on YouTube and I started, um, you know, marking all the side seams and stuff and basting it and we got about halfway done. Um, we're done with the front um, one side. So we're done with one quarter, the front side. And then we need to do this back part and we have to do the other side completely. So that's what I'm going to do today. I actually do only have um, an hour um, to do this live stream and I'm going to set um, a an alarm. But Honestly, I might jump back on because now that I'm actually on live, like, oh, it was so hard for me to do this. I'm being really honest right now. I was dead. Um, and I probably look horrible right now. I'm sorry. But um, that's all right. So I'm going to set an alarm because I do actually really have to run to the post office and it closes at four. Luckily, it's on the corner of my street, like literally two, two buildings away. Um, but yeah, so, um, if you hear alarm go off, I'm sorry, it's going to be annoying, but, uh, okay, so let's get to basting. Also, like, let's get to basting. Let's not, let's wait a minute. Um, really quick though, like, this is how, how bad I'm doing right now. I'm also, I'm not, I'm just tired. Like, there's literally no other reason for me to feel like this. But I literally have water, which I would like to note if you see lots of water bottles ever sitting around um, my live streams and stuff, these are all reused. I am very much a proponent of that. I don't just buy like millions of plastic water bottles. But also, um, kumacha. I literally chugged this while drinking this. That's how I'm feeling right now. But let's get to this basting thing. I'm in love with that. Okay. All right, so what are we gonna do? If you already basted something, pull the pins out because that's unnecessary and like, especially with this full leather, we don't need to have tons of pins. Honestly, this is how I feel right now. Come to me. I need my table to be closer. The bad thing about this table is like I literally just pull it, move it all over my room all the time and I didn't properly put it together from Ikea and the legs are going to fall off at some point. Alright, let's do this. We are going to start basting on, I like the idea of getting the front done with because the front feels like almost there. And then let's move to the back. So we're going to actually do this part first. Um, let me go around to the other side so you actually can see what I'm doing. Alright. Okay, so if you can't notice, this seam right here was already in place and we just added the dart like right here. This seam we had to make up to mimic this side because we really liked um, the look of having the seam run across the center bust. So when we're basting it, we're going to open up the seam and we're going to start doing the stitch. All right. Now, can we find the pin that we were using yesterday? Or the needle, sorry. Oh, I don't have my thread over here. For some reason, yeah, I found it. For some reason, I have a bunch of needles on here that are like 10 foot wide. 
10 foot wide, did that even make sense? Extraordinarily big. Okay. I'm just gonna try to put keep the thread long so I don't have to keep doing that. So right before I got on here, um, as I was like making my coffee, I was listening to the armchair expert. If you ever watch my YouTube channel, live streams, or videos, you would know I'm obsessed with that podcast. It's definitely my favorite one at the moment. Um, but anyways, I was listening to it and okay, so I'm going to base this. And uh, what is it called? They were interviewing Rob Lowe. And I am a huge fan of Rob Lowe, one, just because he's super attractive, two, because he's been in some amazing um, older movies when he was younger, and, um, oh, is that how it works? Like, when movies are older, they're younger? Interesting. But, anyways, ignore me. Um, so, what is it called? Uh, I read one of Rob Lowe's books about like how he got into acting and his struggle with alcoholism and all these things um, a while ago. And it really like, that was honestly one of the best like books I've read on acting just because he gives you like such like an inside view at like some really, really, really famous movies. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that. So it was really interesting to have him on the Armchair Expert also, they have, like, similar things that kind of, that they went through with, like, struggling with addiction and all that stuff. Sadly, I started listening to it right before I came on here, so I had to turn it off, but highly would recommend. I cannot wait to, I'm going to finish listening to it when I run over to the post office. So the reason that I'm basting everything before I pull it off the mannequin is because this was um, freehand draped. Like we literally just made up our plan as we went. So if we just take it all off the mannequin without marking it properly or basting it together, um, we might lose track of like where these pieces were supposed to go, where they were supposed to cinch in, how the flares were supposed to lay. You know, once you take it off the mannequin, it loses all its shape. So you have to be really careful and make sure you have it marked properly and on. Uh, so I genuinely think I'm going to take this dress up a notch. Like, because the pleather is, uh, I keep saying it, I'm sorry, but like it's truly like not that great. Like I'm looking at it and I'm so frustrated. I'm so OCD about little particular things and like the fact that I can tell that this pleather is worn out. I didn't notice it until I like decided to make this and then I was like too stubborn to like change my mind and you like make change my mind in that I wanted to like drape with the pleather but you know what it's very annoying at this moment so I think I'm gonna do something interesting I have no idea what it's gonna be but like I think I'm gonna add some texture or something to this dress like I don't know what if it was actually like pleather covered in like feathers or something
So I, like I was saying on the other side, like there's parts where I don't really want to like baste the seams together. Like on the other side, I didn't want to baste all the velvet skirt to the center seam because I actually don't want the velvet skirt to go all the way to here. Like from here to here, I don't want that. I just want the velvet skirt to end here and like finish off the seam inside really nicely right there. So we're not like using so much of the fabric and it's not so bulky. Well, right here, that's not the case, but at the same time, I want to have really clean seams. So I think I'm going to keep a pin where like the four pieces of fabric meet and I'm going to just base this part like the, um, I'm going to baste here and then I'm going to baste here separately. I'm going to leave an opening right here just so that I can um, connect the seams properly without having to like cut away at the basting because once you start cutting the basting away then the whole thing can fall apart. And we want to make sure we kind of pin in, pin the because I just took out the pins because they were kind of in my way in the side seam but I want to put some back in that are a little out of a little more out of my way. so that this is laying the way that we want it to because we there was some flare in it like this part we want this extra fabric right here i want it to like overlap on the side seam all right so now we can baste away But we don't want to, you never want to pull. So. That's perfect. And again, um, I know like if you have never done this before or seen this before, it's looking very messy. But after we base it all together, then we cut down the seam allowance so it's all equal and proper, the proper distance apart. I'm just interested. I feel like my computer time is off. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. <sighs> so. First, I'm gonna do the top first. I don't know why. And again, um, I don't think I'm noted it in this stream, but I noted in other streams. Um, do not base right on top of your stitch. Base either a little bit inside or a little bit outside because you don't want to actually sew over the basting seam as much as possible. If you do like once in a while, it's fine, but it actually makes the stitch harder to remove. And the reason that we're sewing the basting seam in such a like neon fluorescent color is because it's going to be taken out. This is not a proper stitch in any way at all, except for I do kind of like the contrastiness of it. Also, I'm going to do a similar thing um, with the dart area as I was talking about with leaving an opening um, at the waistline. I'm going to also leave a separation from the, this part to this part so that we have room to sew the dart properly. Um, because again, that's two stitches colliding and we just want to do it properly. Also, um, a, something I'd like to note, and I'm sorry if I'm being repetitive and you were on the stream yesterday, I just don't know how to know, like, who's on the stream or whatever. But, um, so if you weren't on the stream yesterday, uh, I'm doing all French seams on this garment, so I, that's one of the other reasons why I want to take so much time properly basting this, because... Since I'm doing French seams, I don't have to take all these seams out before I sew the garment because we're going to sew the garment just like this and then we're going to flip it and sew all the seams again so that the seams are completely closed off and it's a really um, high quality stitch that will last. 
I'm actually getting really excited about this piece. Like, uh, I'm going to be honest, originally I was not excited at all. <laughs> I was like, this is not me. I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking at. This is not right. Like, it looks wearable, but it's nothing like that I would normally make. Um, but now I feel like, no, it, this could work out really well. This is not going to let me stay here. I didn't draw the side seam onto the skirt yet, so even though I'm basting it now, I definitely want to draw on the side seam before I remove the skirt because, like I said, I'm not actually doing the basting stitch directly on the side seam, so I'd rather have it drawn on there as well. Oh, I got a little knot in my thread. I hate that. Okay. You always want to make sure your side seam is hanging correctly. Like, even though we want it to like overlap and be flowy, and um, we want it to like there to be multiple layers, but like kind of overlapping right there, we still want it to be hanging um, perpendicular, like very, very, very straight. We don't want it to be going at an angle. Or just keep double checking that. So that's what I keep doing is I keep feeling for side seam, make sure like I'm not too far away from it, but also like I said, I try not to get, I have like a big knife in my hand. I'm trying to make sure it is falling correctly. It is surprisingly, it doesn't look like it would be falling correctly, but it actually is. Okay, cool. I don't like when it feels like I'm pulling one side and not the other side. That's why I was double checking it. And I don't want to go all the way to the top, like I said, so I'm actually just going to cut Thread. And also, um, when you're basting, I said this again yesterday, but when I'm basting, I don't 
like tie the knots like into the fabric. I tie the knots like about like an inch or a quarter inch away from the fabric of the garment. So that, you know, the thread, honestly, if you pull it really hard, because I'm just doing a single knot, you could technically sew the, or pull the thread out, but why would you be pulling it really hard? Like, you're the only one touching the garment at the moment, and you just don't want to, like, be knotting all the threads into the fabric because you want them to come out easily. So that's why I do it like that. Let me see. I'm actually going to see about um, sewing, uh, basting this. Where, what, where is the pin that's holding this all together? I have no idea. Alright, there we go. Cool. So on it, I'm going to be really honest, the one seam I don't like about this um, garment so far is this front waistband. I really, there's like a, a, there's a seam already here because there was a band on this skirt and we used the front of the skirt. And I kept that because I needed the length, but I just don't like it at all. So I'm hoping when we add this seam, it will just look like a double seam and it will look better. But yes, this is actually what I'm thinking. So I'm hoping once we do this that I will like it more, but at the moment, at the moment, this one seam right here, I feel like, is the thing that swings it to make me keep thinking it looks like an ice skater costume, and I hate that. There's And there's also a seam under it, and that's why I'm trying to pull that seam flat, just so I can see how it's laying. So before I had it like pinned, the skirt was just pinned on the top and the top was laying flat. So in order to base this stitch, I have to actually like, you know, pin it the way I would if I was sewing it. Otherwise, once I take the garment off, I have to like re undo the base, undo the seam and like redo it. So better to just do it now. You, we won't be able to see the look of the garment as easily once we start, you know, doing scenes like this, but that's okay. The process. Right. And I do have the waistband already drawn on the pleather part, so like I know the seam, so I don't have to worry about that. We know where we're going to stitch it. We know the seam allowance. And I'm just going to continue to take out the pins as I go because we don't need to keep pins in it if we sew the stitch. It's actually so much easier to sew without pins in your garment, to not have to worry about like pulling out pins and all that stuff um, as you go. So pasting is your friend. It just takes a lot of extra time. But we have all the time in the world right now, so why not do it? I am determined to come on tomorrow's live stream feeling like 
so awake, so alive, <laughs> because I am feeling so shit right now. I 100% um, plan on doing a live stream on YouTube today, though. Um, I do have to run a lot of errands. Like, I have to run down to the post office, like I've been saying. I have to get groceries. I literally have nothing in the house. Um, and I have to do some of my laundry. I also mentioned that. So, this is my errand day. So, probably will not be able to go live on YouTube until closer to like 8 o'clock or something but who knows for sure so if you are interested in my live streams um especially my youtube ones i would honestly just say because i can't give you time i just know that i am gonna work on this dress on youtube later today um go over there turn on the bell notification even if you're subscribed if you don't have the notification on the, like that little bell thing I know it's annoying, like, who wants to be notified on their phone, like, for every single person they're subscribed to, but, um, if you want to know when I go live, like, that's kind of the only way to know at the moment, so do that if you are at all interested in joining the live stream later today. Um, I'm gonna actually do a little tiny bee stitch right here on this. I would love to just like get this garment to completion by the end of the week that would be amazing I've just been so slow with everything lately and I really want to pick it up because you know when you're actually like finishing things it's so much more inspiring than when you're just starting things it's so stressful when you just always start things and never finish things then you have like a million things started and you're just feeling stressed about how you're not getting anything done. Okay, so I'm just going to be measuring this right now. Heels. Okay, so now we have that. So now this is actually the seam allowance, but it's exposed now that we flipped it up. So that's cool. Now we actually have the whole front of the garment done. Did I end up sewing this in? Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. The whole front of the garment is um, together as it should be. And now we just have the back. Okay. Also, I have not talked about closures yet, like how I plan on doing the closures of this garment. Because we have an overlapping back seam and we don't have an opening in the back seam, I really don't feel like that should be where the closure is. But then also like the... Mm. Yeah, because this is a very fitted garment. This might have to be where our closure is. Is we might have to have that become a zipper. The side seam like this. At first I was thinking the back would be the closure because this material is so stretchy in the waistband. Um, I figured we just have to open, excuse me, open up this bit, but I don't think that's true. Yeah, I definitely think we're probably going to do the zipper over here. We will Definitely, I will figure that out before um, we start sewing it all together. This will probably be the last bit that I sew together so that I can like decide on that. Okay, let's see. Now I'm going to sew the shoulder. Sadly, I broke my mannequin when I moved to New York from Florida because it's, I don't know if it's actually broken or like if we just couldn't figure out how to properly put it back together, which is really weird because you order these mannequins online um, from Amazon. Uh, and I love this mannequin. This is a really good high quality mannequin. Um, but what is it called? Uh, 
you put it together. Like, it comes in a box, all in pieces, and you put it together, and it worked fine always, and then now it doesn't work anymore. So something is wrong about it. It's in wrong. But anyways, usually this mannequin, you can, like, pull it down and then, like, still sit, like, comfortably as I am with it, like, you know, a not so high up distance from my face, but at the moment can't really do that because of how it is. So as far as this goes, like is it even worth it to baste it because we have to sew all these seams underneath. Hmm. And we have to sew that seam under. So I feel like this, we just proper, we should just properly mark it. We should mark where, where we want it to go and like where we want it to connect. It's velvet though. So what you do when it's, when you want to make sure that your white little markings don't come off is you baste it. So I was able to mark on the pleather, obviously, where this is going to be because it's really easy to write on pleather. But as far as this um, velvety material is, we can't write on it. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to base on the fold because I have it folded under right now. If you base on the fold, you're literally gonna have to take the stitch out so that, um, okay, well also, base so you can actually see the stitches. Um, what is it called? Um, I'm not going to base on the fold because then I'll just have to take the stitch out and that will defeat the purpose. So I'm just going to base on the part that's not folded over to the middle. And that's how we're going to know where the where our seam line is. And also make your stitches kind of big so you can actually see it because that was my problem when I first did it. Okay, cool. And now double check it because this seems really far up. Yeah, I don't know why I thought that the seam line should be there. That's, that's really tight. Alright. I'm going to pin it in place and then do the seam line. So this shows you how easy it is to get the basic stitch out. Why can I not throw my needle all the time? What the heck? <laughs> okay, that's that. Now that's that. Okay, so now I have marked where I want the strap to go, and I have the seam drawn right there. It doesn't matter that it's not attached because we have it all marked. Oh my gosh, stop dropping things. Okay, I still have to... 
well, we already did this. I have to do the waistband basting, and that is basically it. Oh, and base how these two um, front seams overlap seams overlap and attach the shoulder so we are almost done here but I actually have to run out for a minute um, like I said I have to run to the post office before it closes um, so I'm actually gonna end this live um, but like I said come back over to my youtube channel and actually honestly this was um, pretty chill so I might come back here before or after my youtube live which will be anywhere from probably 6 to 9 o'clock tonight. Um, I honestly have no idea. Like I said, go over, turn your notifications on. I will probably go on YouTube before I come back here. But um, anyways, other than that, you can find me here on Twitch um, for the next three days because I said I was going to go live on Twitch at 2 p.m. for five days straight. We've already done two, so two. <laughs> So you can come back and find me tomorrow and um, the next two days for um, on here at 2 o'clock. Hopefully I will not have anywhere to go tomorrow so I can do a much lo uh, longer live stream. Even so, um, this one was like about an almost an hour. So thank you so much for joining and um, I will see you next time. Thanks.